Imagine one evening after a long day in office, you leave from your work very hungry and think of eating something from outside. However, when you step outside, you notice that all the shops outside are closed. You search out a little farther. However, you come to know that due to some strikes, shops are going to be closed for another 5 days. Now this creates a huge problem for you. Neither do you have anything to eat at home, neither can you purchase anything from outside. It is at this moment my friend, that a reality will hit you. And that is, that no matter how much money you have in your pocket, unless and until there is someone ready to supply things to you, the money in your pocket is worthless. Welcome to the Sagar Rao channel my friends. Let's do Supply Analysis. Total output, stock and supply are terms which are interrelated, hence many a times it creates confusion in the minds of students. Let's first understand the differences between them. Say there is a company which produces jams. Every day it manages to produce 100,000 bottles of jam. Now this is the total stock of the company. However, say due to machine error or human error, 100 bottles are destroyed and only 99,900 bottles are saved for that day. This is the company's stock. And out of the stock, the company might supply only that much quantity which is needed in the market, say 90,000 quantities a day. I hope the distinction between total output, stock and supply is clear to you. Now imagine that you are the producer of the jam company. And let's say that your cost in producing one bottle of jam is rupees 50. But you sell one bottle for rupees 100 and earn a 50 rupees profit per bottle. At 100 rupee, you daily supply 10 bottles. But suppose one day I meet you on the street and ask you, how much quantity will you be willing to supply if people are ready to pay you 200 rupee instead of 100 rupee for one bottle? Your immediate reply would be 20 bottles. Why? This is because you say I will be able to earn more profit and profit maximization is the prime motto of any business. Similarly, if someone is willing to pay you 300 rupee for one bottle, you will be willing to supply even more, say 30 bottles, for 400, even more. This friend is the law of supply. It states that higher the price of a commodity, higher will be the quantity supplied. And if you plot this on a graph, you end up getting an upward sloping supply curve. The law of supply is based on many assumptions. It doesn't hold true all the time. Let's look at certain assumptions and exceptions to the law of supply. Earlier we saw that the cost of producing one bottle of jam to you was Rs. 50. However, Say that you produce fruit jam and the cost of producing the jam keeps on changing as per the availability of all fruits. If the cost of producing keeps on changing, then your willingness to produce at higher prices will also keep on changing. Hence, for the law of supply to hold, we need to assume that the cost of production stays constant. Note that these costs include transport costs, technical costs, etc. A firm's profit is also impacted by government policies of taxation and subsidies. This means a higher tax rate will lead to a fall in profits of the firm. This will again affect the supply of the firm. Hence, for the law to hold, it's important that we assume that there is no change in government policies. Say you are a producer of firecrackers. You know that the highest demand for firecrackers is in the festive season like Diwali. So, in the month of February, if I ask you whether you will be willing to produce more at higher prices, your answer would be, it doesn't make sense producing more now, because there won't be any demand in the coming months for firecrackers. Here, you expected lesser demand in the future and hence were reluctant to produce. This tells us that we need to assume that there are no future expectations if the law of supply has to hold true. In real life, a producer generally produces more than one good. Say that a producer produces TV sets and mobile phones. 
If at any point in time he sees a rise in prices for mobile phones, he would be willing to supply more of mobile phones and hence start using most of the resources in making mobile phones. This will lead to a fall in supply for televisions irrespective of the prices of TVs. This violates the law of supply. Hence, we assume that the prices of other goods remain constant. Friends, the length of the video will increase drastically if I continue with the exceptions to the law of supply. Hence, I'll make an another video on that. But I hope that you like this video. If you did, then you know the drill. Do like, comment, share and subscribe. Until then, adios. Hasta la vista.